A single intercontinental ballistic missile, also known as an ICBM, is being launched toward the United States to carry out a nuclear attack. Of course, if this was a full-blown nuclear war, hundreds of ICBMs and submarine-launched ballistic missiles would be launched, in which case, it's exactly what you think. Kaput. Pizz. Game over. You simply cannot stop a raid of hundreds of ICBMs, each carrying tens of nuclear warheads. But what it takes to even intercept a single ICBM is not what you think. It can take up to 30 seconds to detect the launch of an ICBM, depending on the weather. If it's cloudy, as soon as the rocket rises above the clouds, the missile's exhaust will be detected by infrared sensors, either on the older Defense Support Program satellites or newer space-based infrared systems. Once an ICBM is detected by multiple satellites, an accurate trajectory of the booster can be calculated, but not necessarily its target. And thus, a decision has to be made by command and control. Is the missile hostile or could it be just an exercise? The reality is that a simple test launch could be viewed as provocative and start a nuclear war. For this reason, the United States has recently canceled a Minuteman 3 ICBM test because of increased tensions with Russia due to their invasion of Ukraine. But once the decision is made to fire an interceptor, there will be multiple opportunities to shoot down the ICBM since ballistic missiles go through three phases of flight – boost phase, mid-course phase, and terminal phase. Arguably, the easiest time to shoot down an ICBM is during its boost phase, but it's also ironically the least practical one. Intercepting an ICBM during the boost phase while the rocket engine is still burning is a huge advantage because instead of intercepting a small nuclear warhead, it's much easier to hit a relatively slow hot booster that is of monstrous size. But it's the race against time that makes it impractical. A typical ICBM burns for about 250 seconds. As mentioned earlier, it can take up to 30 seconds just to detect an ICBM by satellite, and it can take up to 60 to 70 seconds to launch an interceptor missile and that's without taking into account a decision time. This brings the total reaction time to 100 seconds after the ignition of the ICBM, leaving only 150 seconds to intercept the missile. Depending on the model, an interceptor has a burn time of about 100 seconds. Satellite and other ground-based sensors can guide the missile toward the ICBM before it can lock into the heat signature and strike the ICBM's structure and not sail harmlessly through the tenuous flame. This would be known as hit to kill. While older and less advanced systems would get close to the target and use proximity fuse to detonate an explosive warhead, the hit to kill interceptors rely on kinetic energy, that is, the interceptor's mass and speed to directly hit the target head on and destroy it. What follows a successful strike is a shoot look shoot tactic which confirms whether the missile has been destroyed before launching another interceptor. This can minimize the number of interceptors required to defeat incoming missiles. As you will find out soon, this is very important. On paper, it's relatively easy to destroy a nuclear missile during its boost phase. In practice, however, you have severe reach versus time challenges for intercepting during boost phase. The first challenge is that the command and control has little time to decide whether to fire an interceptor. If making the decision takes more than a minute, if not less, the interceptor will not reach the ICBM before its boost phase ends. To overcome this time challenge, it was proposed to use a weapon that travels at the speed of light, a powerful laser. The goal of the YAL-1 airborne laser system was to shoot down enemy ICBMs during their boost phase from a distance of 115 to 200 miles depending on the type of missile. However, the laser turned out not to be effective since the atmosphere diffused the laser's energy more than it was originally anticipated. The effective range of the laser turned out to be measured in tens of kilometers, which meant that the Boeing 747 on which the laser was mounted would have to be flying within enemy airspace. No ship Sherlock, 
the program was cancelled. The second challenge is range. The interceptors would have to be launched from a relatively close location to the ICBM's launch site, which would make it vulnerable to attack itself. Some say that the lower bound is 30 miles and the upper bound is 620 miles downrange. Regardless, this is a big issue. It may work in case of intercepting a rocket launched from North Korea, but not if launched from the middle of Russia or China. While the American SM-3 missile, which can be launched from either Navy ships or Aegis ashore, has the capability to intercept ICBMs during boost phase, it is not viewed as a viable option due to the range time problem. The American missile defense system currently does not have any practical capability to destroy ICBMs during the boost phase. There is, however, research being conducted on new technologies with a focus on unmanned aerial vehicles. The boost phase may be out for now, but destroying a nuclear missile during its mid-course phase provides the largest time interval to do so, which is about 20 minutes. Seems like a lot of time, but accomplishing this task might be more difficult than hitting a bullet with another bullet. A ballistic missile travels at a speed of about 15,000 miles per hour. That's nine times faster than the speed of an average bullet. There are two ways that Americans can intercept nuclear warheads during the mid-course phase, using a ground-based interceptor or using a standard missile 3 Block 2 Alpha that can be launched from Aegis cruisers and destroyers. The ground-based interceptor is part of a $40 billion ground-based mid-course defense program, which is one of the layers of the American ballistic missile defense system intended to protect the United States from intermediate and long-range ballistic missiles. A ground-based interceptor is a multi-stage solid fuel booster with an exoatmospheric kill vehicle, or EKV. Exoatmospheric means outside of the atmosphere. Thus, the EKV is like a little spacecraft which relies on thrusters to maneuver since the fins cannot help with steering outside of the atmosphere. This is in contrast to endoatmospheric, meaning within atmosphere, where the vehicle is maneuverable through aerodynamic forces. A booster carries the EKV toward the target's predicted location in space, and when it's released, it uses guidance data transmitted from ground support and fire control system components, as well as onboard sensors to close in and destroy the target. Each ground-based interceptor requires its own silo, and all 44 interceptors owned by the United States are currently located at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California and Fort Greeley in Alaska. Each interceptor costs a whopping $75 million. Aside from the ground-based interceptors, another way to destroy a ballistic missile is to utilize the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense. Specifically, the SM-3 Block II Alpha that can rely on satellite and other sensors to track and intercept an intermediate-range ICBM. This is known as Engage on Remote. The SM-3 is a multi-stage interceptor that can be launched from VLS Mark 41 from cruisers and destroyers as well as Aegis Ashore. The interceptor delivers a kill vehicle to space where it maneuvers to intercept an incoming warhead. The biggest challenge for SM-3 interceptors is range. The launch ship has to be suitably located to intercept an ICBM. This is why SM-3s are only good at intercepting intermediate-range ICBMs, while ground-based interceptors can do both intermediate-range and intercontinental. So far, things seem more or less under control. That's until we introduce the next complication, decoys. During its mid-course phase, a typical Russian ICBM like the R-36 Satan can release what seems to be 50 nuclear warheads. But in reality, only 10 of those are actual warheads known as multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles or MIRV. The other 40 are decoys. All of a sudden, one ICBM has turned into 50 different moving targets, 10 of which need to be intercepted. 
The defense systems need to have a way to discriminate between decoys and lethal targets so precious interceptors are not wasted on decoys. We should also add that other debris, like nose cones, can add to the discrimination challenge. While low-resolution radars can track individual objects, they cannot discriminate between a lethal object versus a decoy. This is precisely why the United States has the sea-based X-Man radar whose primary task is to discriminate lethal targets from decoys and then perform precision tracking of those warheads. Another similar radar, the long-range discrimination radar at Clear Space Force Station in central Alaska, can similarly discriminate lethal objects from decoys and forward their trajectory to interceptor missiles in real time. The LRDR construction and installation have been completed at a cost of $784 million with the final touches currently being performed before the radar becomes operational in late 2022. The EKV not only relies on its own sensors to discriminate and perform target selection, it also uses data from discriminatory radars that we mentioned. Knowing all this, how many ICBMs do you think the United States can realistically intercept using its entire stock of 44 ground-based interceptors? Just to demonstrate the complexity of each ICBM having multiple warheads and decoys, consider this scenario. A single R-36 ICBM can house 10 warheads and 40 decoys. Now, assuming that the discrimination radars can correctly identify all 10 lethal warheads, you'd think that the 44 ground-based interceptors can successfully neutralize at least four ICBMs carrying 10 warheads each. But the answer is not what you think. Each ground-based interceptor only has a 56% probability of actually intercepting a single target. It would take not two, not three, but four interceptors to increase the probability of intercepting a single target to 97%, which means a single ICBM with 10 deployed warheads can easily overwhelm the United States' entire ground-based interceptors and possibly detonate on American soil. And this is exactly why the American missile defense system relies on multiple layers. A single line would only be able to destroy a fraction of incoming threats, but combining multiple lines of defense, last of which is the terminal phase, can destroy most, if not all, warheads. The terminal phase begins when a nuclear warhead re-enters the atmosphere. This phase is very short, only takes about a minute, and it's the last opportunity to intercept before the warhead reaches its target. That said, this is the least desirable time for interception, because it can occur close to the intended target, and there is also little margin for error. Keep in mind that when a nuclear warhead is intercepted, it doesn't explode. In order for a nuclear warhead to go critical, the explosive charges need to go off in a specific sequence, essential to initiate a nuclear explosion. The result of an interception would be a large spray of radioactive materials near the target area, which is not good, but is much better than a nuclear explosion. The American Ballistic Missile Defense System can intercept warheads during the terminal phase using the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense or THAAD, the U.S. Navy SM-6 missiles launched from warships, or the U.S. Army's Patriot Advanced Capability 3 missiles. But there is a catch. While viewing the Missile Defense Agency diagram may give you the impression that the defense systems that we just mentioned can intercept nuclear ballistic missiles, the truth is that these interceptors can only hit short-range, medium-range, and intermediate-range ballistic missiles. They cannot shoot down intercontinental ballistic missiles because those warheads re-enter the atmosphere at Mach 24+. Maybe Thought would be able to hit it head-on, but I wouldn't bet my life on it because Thought's top speed is less than Mach 9 and it's designed to intercept missiles with speeds of Mach 5 to 8 at a maximum altitude of 93 miles. An alternative way to shoot down nuclear warheads during their terminal phase is to use endoatmospheric interceptors armed with small nuclear bombs. This is exactly the strategy that the Russian A-135 anti-ballistic missile system relies on, 
By exploding nuclear interceptors on the border of the atmosphere and space, the A-135 system can disable incoming warheads traveling at speeds of up to 15,600 miles per hour or Mach 20. Who would have thought of shooting down nukes with nukes? The bottom line is this. Shooting down something like an ICBM, while possible, is extremely complicated. And we haven't even mentioned maneuverable re-entry vehicles or hypersonic glide vehicles that can outmaneuver defense systems. The current goal of missile defense systems is to minimize the threat of rogue nations like North Korea from launching ICBMs toward American soil, as they are viewed as not being deterred, that is, they are not afraid of total annihilation and might strike anyway. A recent 2022 study argued that no system thus far developed has been shown to be effective against realistic ICBM threats, even from North Korea. But the Pentagon respectfully disagrees. They feel confident in their abilities and claim that external studies are based on outdated and inaccurate data due to classification restrictions. The Pentagon aims to develop a next-generation interceptor dubbed Never Fail Weapon System. I suppose we'll see about that. On a second thought, hopefully we will never find out.